Squawk 7000 is bringing you a roundup of aviation news this week, starting Monday, January 16th, in association with FlyingInIreland.com. Remember to subscribe and to keep us as Ireland's number one aviation podcast, and we'll deliver the news to your device every Monday morning. I'm Michael Cummins. This week's headlines. New standard instrument departure for runway 28 left Dublin from February this year. Emerald Airlines appoints new chief executive. Irish leasing companies continue to report growth and expansion. And in 2022, Cork Airport welcomed a total of 2.24 million passengers. Since Dublin's new North Runway opened on August 24th, there's been many noise complaints from the North County Dublin area related to the new Standard Instrument Departures, or SIDS. All departures off runway 28 left take an immediate right turn after takeoff and fly over several communities including Kinsala and Roganstown. In December, the Aircraft Noise Competent Authority, ANCA, commenced a review of operations on the North Runway when it was revealed that the new SIDS need to mirror the original noise modelling carried out as part of the original planning process. Since it opened, there's been a staged approach to operational integration of the new runway, which saw hours increasing from 9 to 1 and 7 to 1, and then to 6 o'clock. The runway is currently open until 6, with further extensions subject to the outcome of the ANCA review. In a statement, DAA said on commencement of operations, an issue regarding departure flight paths was identified, which resulted in some local communities being unexpectedly overflown, for which DAA apologises sincerely. The statement goes on to say that DAA immediately started a review to satisfactorily resolve the issue as soon as possible. The revised SIDs were required to go through regulatory review and consent processes before they could be implemented. They have been approved and will become operational on February 23rd. Only then will existing SIDs be used, but there will continue to be no departures off the North Runway before 9 o'clock in the morning. The new SIDs will result in flight paths aligning more closely with the information previously communicated by TAA. Shannon-based Gainjet Ireland announced it passed its 100th Medivac mission milestone using Echo Juliet, Romo Echo Victor Alpha, Hawker 800 XP, operating on behalf of Riva Inc., The new medevac operation was established last February. According to Gainjet Ireland's accountable manager, Ray Mills, the fact that they've performed so many missions in recent times is a testament to the professionalism and resilience of their pilots and medics who fly in the aircraft. Staying in Shannon, a Shannon-based company, InFlight Flix, has signed a deal with Aer Lingus to provide Irish tourism videos on all Aer Lingus North American flights this summer. Aer Lingus has a record number of 2.25 million seats on sale to North America in summer 2023, making it its most extensive North American summer schedule. This year, the airline will operate 15 direct transatlantic routes from Ireland and three direct transatlantic routes from Manchester to Orlando, New York, JFK and Barbados. InFlight Flix produces destination video guides for airline in-flight entertainment, showcasing great things and places to go, stay, eat, drink and shop in cities within their network inspiring people to visit Ireland. In-Flight Flix videos on Aer Lingus aircraft will feature 500 Irish tourism experiences covering every corner of Ireland and destination guides to two UK cities and 11 transatlantic destinations. This agreement follows an initial partnership from 2018 where In-Flight Flix produced Wild Atlantic Way and Dublin video guides for Aer Lingus. Elite Flight Simulation Solutions has recently sold a new Garmin G1000 flight simulator to Ireland's Southeast Technological University. C2 offers learning and collaboration platforms intended to transform the ambitions of learners, researchers and businesses across Ireland and beyond. The Department of Aerospace and Mechanical Engineering has a history of achievement over the past 40 years and was awarded the Irish Aviation Authority Aviation Academic Education Award. According to a statement from Dr. Jared Gibbs, Programme Director of the Aerospace Engineering course, the university is the only one in Ireland to have a Garmin G1000 glass cockpit flight simulator. He believes the custom-built G1000 flight simulator will significantly benefit the university. The addition of the flight simulation will transform the teaching experiences for both staff and students, according to Dr. Gibbs. Six West, in collaboration with the Atlantic Flight Training Academy AFTA, jointly organised a student initiative competition way back in 2019, designed to create awareness of Ireland's thriving aviation industry and to encourage students to consider a future career in aviation. The competition was aimed at students from the fourth year transition year to the sixth year and it was promoted nationwide across Ireland. 
The judges were looking for video submissions that presented innovative ideas capable of challenging industry standards and powerful enough to spark debate among of Ireland's top industry leaders. The competition generated significant interest and the judges were deeply impressed with the high standard of the videos received and the topics they focused on. Covid shutdowns during 2020 and 2021 and more recently scheduling challenges meant that there was a lengthy delay in the presentation of the prizes. It was generally agreed on the day that it was well worth the wait. The winners, Ben Christie from Mount St Michael, Ross Carberry Cork and Evan Barnable from Sutton Park School Dublin impressed the judges with their video entries. Evan's submission focused on the return of supersonic flight. Ever since I was young, I've always loved aviation. Whether I was sketching airplanes, building Lego models, or flying my drone. We can see that the aviation world is rapidly growing. And I began wondering what the future had in store. I have recently become very interested in the world of supersonic flight. And I'm really excited about how they may be returning to our skies sooner than we think. But in order for us to excel in the future, we must first look into the past. Concorde was an iconic aircraft. It was in operation for nearly 30 years, from 1976 to 2003. While Ben proposed a method to reduce fuel consumption during taxiing. Hello, my name is Ben Christie and I'm a fifth year student from Mount St. Michael, Ross Carberry. I've always had an interest in aviation for really as long as I can remember. I believe one of the biggest problems facing aviation right now is not in the air but on the ground. Your average 737 taxiing from the gate to the runway will use roughly 270 kilograms worth of fuel for only a 15 minute taxi. This could be reduced by implementing underground electric run tugs to taxi the aircraft to and from the gates. The tugs could be composed of a network travelling underneath the taxiway such as a train track method. Controlled by the computers, the tugs could then be programmed to head to the gate in which the aircraft is positioned. The winners' prizes included a session in AFTRA's Boeing 737 flight simulator, and after that, they enjoyed hands on flying in AFTRA's aircraft around Cork. Well, if you'd like to see their winning entry videos, you can visit Six West's website. Emerald Airlines, Ireland's newest airline and the largest operator out of the Belfast City Airport, announced the appointment of Keith Butler as incoming chief executive with effect from March 2023. Mr. Butler will succeed Emerald Airlines founder Conor McCarthy, who will take the position of executive chairman. With over 15 years in the aviation industry, Mr Butler brings a wealth of experience to Emerald Airlines from his most recent role leading CAE Park Aviation over the last five years in aviation-related activity to his long-standing journey with in Aer Lingus. Mr Butler had senior management positions across multiple functions in the Irish flag carrier, including commercial, planning and HR, including the role of Chief Planning and Strategy Officer. Most notably, Mr Butler was heavily involved in the Aer Lingus transatlantic business model that saw Aer Lingus successfully develop its Dublin hub. Emerald Airlines, the exclusive franchise partner for Aer Lingus's regional network, plans to transit over 250,000 passengers via Aer Lingus's Dublin hub during 2023. Leasing company Avalon has reported an increased level of leasing during 2022. The company executed 237 lease deals, including new aircraft deliveries follow-on leases and lease extensions during the year. Avalon also sold 36 aircraft in 2022. As the aviation industry recovered from the pandemic, Avalon managed to add 10 new customers during 2022 for a total of 146 airline customers operating in 63 countries. At the end of last year, Avalon owned and managed a fleet of 576 aircraft, with total orders and commitments for a further 258 fuel-efficient new technology aircraft. Avalon also reported that they're fully placed on their order for 500 vertical aerospace EV tolls with certification expected during 2024. CH Aviation reports on its website that the UK Civil Aviation Authority has awarded Emerald Airlines United Kingdom an Air Operator Certificate AOC, authorising it to fly domestic UK routes out of Belfast City. The British sibling of Emerald Airlines Ireland launched on December 7th last year. It currently operates a single ATR 72600 under the Aer Lingus regional banner, connecting Belfast with Glasgow International and Southampton. The Irish AOC operates 13 ATR 72600s, all flying for Aer Lingus. For the time being, all other routes that Emerald Airlines operates for Aer Lingus out of Belfast, Birmingham International, Cardiff, Edinburgh, Exeter, Leeds, Bradford and Manchester remain flown by the Irish AOC. 
Following Brexit, EU carriers can no longer operate domestic UK routes. In 2022, Cork Airport welcomed a total of 2.24 million passengers in a year that saw the swift recovery of international travel after removing the last remaining COVID-19-related restrictions, the airport is well on track for a robust comeback in 2023. The 2022 passenger performance represents a 768% increase in 2021 traffic and an 86% recovery from the 2019 passenger traffic numbers, the last equally comparable period before the pandemic. With the solid demand for international travel the previous year and new route additions, Cork Airport delivered exceptional passenger recovery on top of its successful runway reconstruction, completed in November 2021. And 2022 was a year of growth and learning, resulting in several new opportunities for Acumen. One key development was acquiring their major stakeholder Airworks Group by Danny Defence and Aerospace. According to a recent statement, lease management, structuring advisory, trading and remarketing remain stable despite the prevailing winds that continue to buffer the aviation industry. Although global asset transition activity remained commercially frustrated across the sector, the technical and asset management TAM team, part of Acumen's consultancy arm, continues to make strides and secured several new clients across the globe, including some new operators. Acumen also provides certificates, professional diplomas and a postgraduate program centred around aircraft leasing, financing and technical asset management. They've enrolled more than 120 candidates within the past period. Acumen's training team continue to provide educational services to the aviation community. And we'll be back after this short break. Ryanair has confirmed that its Tenerife TFS and Lanzarote bases will reopen at the start of summer 2023. Both opened in 2011 and closed in early 2020 due to the pandemic, although flights continued using non-stationed aircraft. It also had a base at Las Palmas, Gran Canaria, but whether that will reopen is still to be determined. Ryanair served six Canary Island airports with 149 routes in 2022. It's the leading foreign airline in all six. It has a quarter of all seats at Tenerife South and Lanzarote. Tenerife South made up 34% of Ryanair's Canary Island seats in 2022. Irish-owned company Azul Agency TFS has set up in Tenerife South to assist new crews in sourcing accommodation, car leasing insurance and registration on the island. The Minister for Justice, Simon Harris, recently announced an additional capital allocation of €21.5 million Euro to support significant investment in a replacement helicopter and fixed-wing plane for Angarda Shikona. Funding will be provided in 2023 to support the procurement of a more extended range and high-capacity utility helicopter fully equipped with Garda mission equipment. Funding will also be made available to procure a fully equipped aircraft with the requisite reliability and enhanced capabilities to support policing, security and surveillance operations. The new helicopter will also support the rapid deployment of the emergency response unit and armed support units where necessary. In route news, Ethiopian Airlines is to add a route Addis Ababa Atlanta with the Boeing 787-900 from May 16th with the 50-minute fuel stop in Dublin westbound. Logan Air flights from Teesside to Belfast and Dublin will be scrapped from March 23rd. Logan Air blamed the move on low customer demand this summer. Well, Jason Phelan has come up with a unique fundraiser involving two bears. Captain Paddy T-Bear and his sidekick Lucky will be taking to the skies over the next 12 months to raise money for the Laurel Inn Foundation and Dogs Trust Ireland. Jason, who works with the Irish Aviation Authority in flight operations, says the furry pair will fly all over Ireland and beyond logging all their flights, aircraft types and pilot in command. Two separate Just Giving pages have been set up for Laurel Inn and Dogs Trust and at the end of the year, Captain T. Paddy and Lucky will be auctioned off along with their unique logbooks and passports, all for a good cause. According to Jason, pilots with Aer Lingus, Emerald Airlines, Executive Helicopters, Cutting Edge Helicopters, Aero Superbatics, Wing Walkers and many individual pilots have gotten in touch wanting to get involved and support the fundraiser. Jason's previous fundraising events, including him wing-walking in aid of the Red Panda Network. If you want to donate or contribute a flight, you can contact Jason at a dedicated email address at aviationirelandchallenge at gmail.com. And you can follow Captain Paddy T. Bear and Lucky's Adventures on Facebook and Instagram. Remember, if you have aviation news and you'd like to share it, include us in your news emails and send your stories to news at squawk7000.ie. 
Remember too, we have over 122 episodes now of Squawk 7000 in the library, including our summer series of extended interviews with people from the world of aviation.